G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I've got a video in Revit. I um, haven't done one for a while in Revit. Um, and we're focusing today on developing a staggered array family, quite a useful technique. So thank you for the request um, to Omar from the United Kingdom who uh, placed this request for me originally. Um, and it's a, a great question. So he effectively presented me with this diagram and said, how would I create this type of family? Now I can see here, whoever's put this together has obviously succeeded. Um, I know how they've done it, um, but I'll, I'll make a video today showing how you can create a line-based detail component family uh, that follows this type of concept. Um, so today I'll be using Autodesk Revit 2024. Um, if you are using 2025, you can actually use uh, more intelligent arrays that can go down to zero. But today I'm gonna to show you how to protect your arrays from breaking in this type of array um, using some formulas. So in this case, I'll assume you've got a little bit of knowledge in Revit and in family creation, at least at a fundamental level, but I'll try to explain what I'm doing as I go. Um, so without further ado, let's jump in. Um, as always, if I'm talking too fast, feel free to slow me down in the YouTube playback speed. So just to show what we're aiming for today, this is just a detail family, a line-based family. And as I change its extent, you'll see that we're gaining and losing segments that are extending to fit in the space. And we have a black, white, black, white pattern, which fills the space. And when we take it right down to a small length, we end up with two segments at the very least. So in this case, we're gonna replicate this behavior uh, by building our own family from the ground up. So we're gonna begin by actually building the stripe, not just the overall family. And we're gonna nest this component. So I'm just gonna start by making a detail item and we're just gonna build a single stripe. Now it's always good practice to build your arrayed components as nested families because it will make them a lot easier to constrain and sometimes it's not possible to build families that are easily constrainable unless they are nested in my experience. So I'm gonna make this in the left to right orientation direction. And for now, I'm just gonna to model to a fairly large size just to make this easier to work with. It doesn't really matter what size we make it because we're gonna push the size into the stripe at the overall detail line family level. So I'm just creating some reference planes and I'm just gonna create a center equal equal constraint here. And I'm gonna assign some parameters First, I'm going to assign a depth parameter um, on a, you could do a type basis or a width or a instance basis. I'm going to do a type basis. Now, the reason why I'm going to do this is because you can associate instance parameters in a host family, as long as this family isn't shared, so it doesn't reach the project at a type level. And it's much easier than having to constrain on an instance basis. Um, so you'll see what I mean once I actually get down to the, the next stage. So at the moment, I'm just gonna constrain a filled region just with a generic border style. You can use custom styles if you want. And I'm just gonna firstly draw one box and constrain with the prompts, because that will constrain to the reference planes. And I'm just gonna modify this region style and just call this black and make it solid. And this will be one type of stripe. So what I'm gonna do is associate a visibility parameter to this, um, just called black and make it a, a type-based aspect of the component. Now I can make it instance-based, or oh, actually I might make it, uh, yeah, I'll make it instance-based, why not? Instance-based, and then I'm gonna copy another one, and I'm gonna make this one uh, white instead. So we're just gonna use one stripe family uh, for both colors in the array to just save a bit of file size, and just it's just more efficient. Because really the only thing that makes these different is their color, not their size. So I'm just gonna constrain this using the align tool. And in the family, I'm just gonna use a formula. Um, okay, looks like I missed out on associating a new visibility parameter there as well. So I should associate a white parameter on an instance basis. And I'm gonna say, if this family is black, then it is not white. So effectively the user will just have one control to toggle between black or white. And I'm just gonna call this family typical. I'm gonna make sure my family is not shared so that it only belongs to the family that I nest it within. And I'm just gonna save this particular family and just call this nested stripe. I'm now gonna make a new family and now I'm gonna make a detail item line-based family. And this is going to be where we build our array of stripes, um, and this will be the family we place on the project. 
So I'm just going to load my nested stripe into this family. And I'm just going to place one stripe here, make it a black stripe, one stripe here, make it a white stripe by ticking on black, which will toggle it to white. And then I'm also going to make two more of these and I'm going to array each of them using a second and a group and associate natured array. And these are going to become the array of black and white stripes and also the black or the white stripe that will show when we go right down to a few stripes only where we don't want to show an arrayed stripe. So I'm gonna need a few controls here. I'm just gonna create a few reference planes. I'm gonna need three of them, I believe. I'm just gonna make them not a reference as well so they don't provide a snap in the project. And I'm create, gonna create one, two, three dimensions and I'm gonna constrain them all with one parameter. And this is going to be uh, the maximum or the best fit length of the number of stripes that I wanna accommodate in my array. So I'm just gonna call this calc for calculate and I'm just gonna say uh, actual stripe length. And I'm just gonna make this an other parameter so it sits apart from the main parameters that we'll enter. Now, because this is a line-based family, it's already got an inbuilt length parameter that we can use in formulas. So I'm also gonna to want to add to this family a maximum stripe length. And this will be our largest stripe length in the array that we wanna use. Let's say that we actually wanna make this a type-based parameter. And maybe we'll say this is maybe 250. So to find out how many stripes we can fit in the array, we're going to take, in this case, our length divided by our maximum stripe, stripe length. Now this is gonna give us an inconsistent unit because currently it's not a whole number. But if I put this in brackets, we can then, in this case, round. Now this isn't actually an integer as well. I actually need to create uh, actual stripe count parameter. And then I can feed that in, but I'm also going to round up so that we fit at least the number of stripes we need so that we never exceed our maximum stripe length. Now from here, we can actually get our proper stripe count. So I'm gonna say in this case that that is going to be length divided by actual stripe count. I can see my actual stripe width is actually 240 in this case. So that's effectively the first step covered. We now know the size of these stripes in order to fit that many, which is currently five. And we can push this parameter down into the size. Now this is a type parameter, remember. This is why it's good to use a type parameter if all these things are the same. I can now say that the width of this is my actual stripe length. And I can instantly control all of the stripes, even though there's all these stripes hanging around the family with one parameter at a type level because it's not a shared family. So it's not gonna reach the project and have the ability for, edit, for users to edit its type properties beyond this level of a family. I'm also going to, in this case, just uh, set a nominal width. So I'll say the depth of the stripe is maybe just 50 for now. And I might also just associate a parameter to this, just call this uh, stripe width. So at this point, I can do a few things. I'm gonna constrain my first black stripe and my first white stripe. And I'm gonna to center constrain them as well. And we're gonna create a visibility parameter on each of them. And I'm just gonna call this show one black stripe only. And show one white stripe only. Now currently this family has a problem. Um, if my family gets so short that it can't accommodate more than one stripe, let's say the stripe length is longer than the total length, we're actually gonna end up with a smaller number of stripes than we'd want. We never actually wanna go below two stripes in this particular family. So I'm going to actually add in a calculate safe stripe count. And I call this a safe stripe count because it's a parameter that's gonna ensure 
that this parameter will never drop below two in reality. So what I'm gonna do is actually say that the safe stripe count is if the actual stripe count is greater than two, then actually than one, then great, we can use the stripe count. Otherwise it's two. So we're using an if then else condition here. And this will protect this parameter from ever actually dropping too low. What I can do then is just instead use this safer stripe count to calculate the stripe length in this case. So this will always ensure that we never go below two stripes in our family. I also know that I'm only gonna see one of each of these stripes in two specific conditions. Once I see at least three stripes, I'm not gonna to need to use the single stripe only. Likewise, once I go past three stripes, I'm not gonna to need to see the single white stripe family. I can begin using the array. So what I'm gonna do is just associate a parameter at a visibility basis to the array and say show array black stripe. I'm gonna make it an instance parameter and then I'm also gonna create one for the white stripe. And now we'll begin to set the conditions under which these two sets of controls will start to appear. I can also actually associate a parameter here as well. So in this case, I'm going to make a calculate safe white stripe count. Now we will need an actual white stripe count as well. So I'm gonna make that an instance based parameter and I'm also gonna create a calculate safe black stripe count. And we'll come back to these shortly. So in this case, I can now begin to set the conditions under which these will show. So we know we only want to see one black stripe when the safe stripe count in this case, which is like our count now. In this case, we only will see it in this case if we're in less than four stripes, no, less than, less than three stripes because we see the second, the second stripe or the array appear when we get to three total stripes. So I'm gonna say that this is only the case when stripe count is less than three. One stripe only will only appear when we're less than four or we're greater than one. So technically the greater than one condition will never actually be a problem. Um, we can build it anyway, just in case we change our mind later. So we can use an or condition and say, well, this has to be at least greater than one. Now, technically our safe stripe count can never go below two. So this condition will never be satisfied, but I'm just gonna build it in in case someone ever wants to modify how this family behaves. And actually this needs to be an and condition. Both of those conditions need to be true. It needs to be between one and four for a second, a second uh, white stripe to be seen. Uh, in this case, the array of black stripes will be used once we have at least three stripes. So my black stripe array will appear once we are at greater than two stripes. And my white array will appear once we are greater than three. So this should now set the scene for how these are going to be arrayed. The next step is we need to figure out how many black stripes and how many white stripes we need. And we're gonna to have to protect these as well because these can also go below two if we're not careful and break their respective two arrays. So I'm now gonna make a calc, uh, calc uh, white stripe count and I'm also gonna create a calc black stripe count. And these will be the actual intended number of black and white stripes we wanna see. And then we'll protect these using a formula. So in this case, uh, the black stripe count is going to be a, I think it's a round up in this case. So I'll just double check. In this case, we would want to see one, two, three black stripes. So we would round up half of the stripe count. So I'm gonna take my safe, sorry, my safe stripe count, and I'm gonna round up that divided by two. And then the uh, white stripe count is going to be round down of the same formula. So we now have two white stripes, three black stripes, correct. If we increase this to 300, we now have four stripes total, two black, two white, which makes sense. Now again, we're gonna protect these. So I'm gonna take my white stripe count and I'm gonna make the safe white stripe count if that is greater than one, then great, it can be the same. Otherwise two. And likewise, we'll protect the same for the black. 
That way, even if these turn off when we no longer need an array to represent them, behind the scenes, they're still gonna be in a disabled array so that they never actually break behind the scenes in the family, which is really important. So all that's left to do now is just actually constrain the arrays. So I'm gonna constrain the first item and the second item. And notice it's really easy to constrain arrayed elements when they're nested because you only have to hook onto their reference planes and that's it. Their geometry doesn't need to be constrained relative to the component. There's the other one and there's finally the last one. And let's say we go back to 250 I can see my staggered array now accommodates this scenario. So let's just save this family. And I'll just call this staggered array two because I already have one that I built before. I'm gonna load this into a project and just test it. So I click once and we can see that my staggered array is now constructing itself. And as we go further down, if we get to four, it's fine if we get to three, we can see now we only see two black and one white. And if I go down to less than that, I see one black and one white. Now behind the scenes, there's still an array. It's just hidden, but it's not breaking in this case, which is really important because you don't want people to have the ability to break your families. And because it's parametric, we can go and change the maximum stripe length and the width. Let's say we want it to be half as big in scale and I can half it in scale. It's a parametric family. Um, but that effectively is how you can create a staggered array. So I hope that helps address um, the user query. It was a great question, um, a topic that I've had before from people but haven't covered on the channel. So I hope that it was an interesting topic and a quick little tutorial in families, which I know people enjoy too. Um, so you'll find this family and other content over on my GitHub, so feel free to check it out. And um, thanks for watching. Uh, you can contact me via email or you can leave video requests or comments down below. There's a few video requests still coming, so do be patient if you are waiting for yours. Uh, I promise I'll get to it eventually. I am trying. Um, anyway, I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Uh, thanks. Take care.